Hi. Um, I know a lot of you have dogs that take issue with the sounds of thunder and fireworks in the summer season. And even though it's December and we are quickly approaching the holiday season, this is the best time to start working on the <clears throat> fear and um, stress issues that your dog's going to have with summer storms and fireworks right now. So we often talk about imprinting our dog, right? And we imprint the smell, the aroma, with a state of mind. That's really what this is about. And so your selection of essential oils is not necessarily um, the top goal here, right? Certainly there are essential oils that make more sense than others. Peace and calming, stress away, vetiver, lavender, grounding, um, valerian, cedar wood, any of those earthy woods that sort of bring that grounding experience, anything that brings a state of calming is a good choice, right? But the choice is less of an issue than the state of mind is. So if you bring out an essential oil in the height of a thunderstorm, you are likely to imprint that aroma, that fragrance, that experience with the storm. You're creating an association between that fragrance and the storm. And so it may not work to your advantage. The same thing is true if you bring out something like a thunder shirt <clears throat> for the very first time in the middle of a thunderstorm and you're trying to wrap your dog in it and he has this experience of what is this thing and why am I feeling uncomfortable? Why am I feeling all this binding? For some dogs, it works beautifully. For others, we are creating more of a, of a stressful incident, right? So what you need to do is get a couple of options, right? Whether you're going to choose a single oil, a blend of oils, or you're going to create your own combination through making a spray, making a, an oil you can pet your dog with, or um, running the diffuser. <clears throat> and do it now. Think of these cold, wintry, rainy, snowy days where everybody's cuddled up on the couch and your dog is quite happy and content by the fire with you petting him, right? He's nice and cozy and comfortable. And we bring in an essential oil that perhaps we act as that first diffuser, meaning the first time they experience it, it's on us. That fragrance is on us. <clears throat> sure, it is still addressing limbic system work that it needs to do, but it's not this big overwhelm scent to your dog. Remember, their olfactory senses are way more um, sensitive than your own. So he's gonna smell things that you don't even pick up on. <clears throat> so add um, one of those diffuser necklaces, wear it with an essential oil at this quiet, cozy, comfy time, right? Um, put a drop on your hand, pet the dog. Bring that essential oil into this process of imprinting so that the fragrance is associated with the state of mind of being comfortable and cozy and calm with you. And do it often. Don't just do it once or twice. Do it often over the next couple of months. <clears throat> also layer into the experience after a week or so of, of working on the imprint of the oils layer in um, the sound of thunder or the sound of fireworks, get it downloaded from YouTube, play it on a very low volume on your laptop or your um, stereo system, very low while you and the dog are on the couch by the fire watching a movie, right? We can't we can't simulate barometric pressure changes, and they're certainly going to pick up on all of those things. 
but sound is a big piece of the equation. So if we can start to minimize as many of the factors as we can, and the only thing that's left in the real experience is the barometric pressure, we have some, you know, some hope of trying to get this thing resolved. So what I do is start the, um, the sound at an extremely low volume. It's generally so low that you can't even hear it while you're watching a movie or working on your laptop. Your dog probably can hear it, but you might not be able to. And over the course of a few weeks, the volume is increased by one, um, one point on the dial. Little by little, the volume is increased until it's a reasonable sound level, right? We're not talking blaring. We're just talking about everybody hears it. And then <clears throat> over the course of the next few weeks, you're going to have these quick bursts of turning the dial up so it has a second or two or these big booming, no uh, uh, big booming sounds, and then that goes back to a reasonable quiet level, right? We're imprinting the oil, we're imprinting the experience, the sound happens briefly, and we'll go back. At, and you act as if n absolutely nothing happened, like you heard nothing at all, right? This process really is about desensitizing the dog to the sound and imprinting them to the experience of a very calm, very comfy, very cozy state of mind. Then in the summer, when we are, when we know that storms are going to come, um, ideally <clears throat> we can have the diffuser set on a timer to turn on late afternoon. If you're at work and you know storms are scheduled to arrive around three or four in the afternoon, the diffuser kicks on, runs on this intermittent schedule, and Ideally, your dog goes to a calm state of mind because that's what he's associated this oil, this scent with. Okay? It works. I've done it many times. I had my own Great Dane that at one point was really afraid um, <clears throat> of, of storms. She was more comfortable if she could get somewhere and get like under a blanket or under the covers and just sort of hide from it all. But using this process, <clears throat> she got to the point where if, 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 if we needed to go potty outside in the middle of a storm, out she went, right? She sort of adjusted to the fact that it was no big deal. And this is the technique that I used. So it's, again, all these things are doable. We just have to get ahead of what we think. So, again, <clears throat> this isn't like going down to the mega retailer and applying a, a medication that is intended to sedate your dog and sort of get them for the next few hours to not experience the thing, right? It's not trying to, to eliminate that. We're actually trying to shift the dog's state of mind and help them have better coping skills. So I would strongly encourage you to spend January and February while it's winter time and those, again, Saturday, Sunday afternoons, especially where we're cuddled up by the fire with the dog to use that time as the imprint of the experience and the desensitization to the sound. Good luck. Keep me posted. I hope to hear back from you this summer and you say, oh my gosh, it worked. <laughs>